This video will be focused on password attacks. One term you need to be familiar with is hash. Operating systems and applications run passwords through hashing algorithms and stores the hash values. How it works is when user enters their password to log in, it is converted into hashes. The result is compared with the stored hashes on the server to look for a match. And if they do match, the user is authenticated and is able to log in into the application. Now that you know how hashes work, let's go over the five different password attacks that you should know for the Security Plus 601 exam. First, we have the spraying attack. Spraying attack is when the attacker simply tries a small list of common passwords on multiple accounts. A step beyond that, we have the dictionary attack. Dictionary attack is a brute force attack that runs through a list of common words, phrases, and leaked passwords. A password crapping application like shown is used along with a dictionary file. The dictionary file contains a list of common passwords that people use like A, B, C, D, E, F, G, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and much more. This is the reason why people recommend that you use complicated passwords to protect yourself against dictionary attacks. Next, we have brute force attack. Brute force attack attempts to recover a password by trying every possible combination of characters. Each combination pattern is tried until the password is accepted. There are two types of brute force attacks that you need to know for the exam, online and offline. Offline attack is when the attacker has access to the encrypted material or a password hash and tries different key without the risk of discovery or interference. Think of it as someone who just stole your phone and has all the time in the world to break into it. Online attack is when the attacker needs to interact with the targeted system and has no access. This is more complicated due to a lot of securities put in place, like having limits on how many attempts you can try to attempt a password, as well as click on images to prove that you're not human, CAPTCHA, or even phone verification codes. Next, we have the rainbow table. A rainbow table is a file that contains all the corresponding hash values of a plain text passwords. It's basically a pre-built set of hashes. If the attacker gains access to a list of password hashes, they can crack all passwords very quickly with the rainbow table. They also don't need the actual password. They just need something that comes up with the same hash value and it will still work as if it was the original password. It's simplified to just a simple search and compare operation on the table. To prevent rainbow table attacks, we now have sorted hashes. Sorting is basically adding additional random data to the password. That way, each hash becomes unique for each user. So even if a hacker knows the key to decrypt the rainbow table, the hashes will not match. Lastly, we have plain text unencrypted. This is when the attacker has encrypted data as well as plain text. It's like being given half of two things. If you have a little bit of the plain text, you may be able to start breaking down the cryptography. This known plain text is referred to as the crypt because it helps you determine what the rest of the plain text should be. That wraps it up for password attacks covering the Security Plus 601 exam. Oh, yeah.